Hello, co-stars, and welcome back to an episode of Generation Films. My name is RX82, American Ben. Postage stamps, Japanese self-defense force, future combat systems, firefighting PSAs, statues, cars, and science. All of these things have one thing in common. I don't understand them, but Gundams have had their mechanical hands in influencing all of them. 40 years ago, in the midst of a Japan rapidly climbing out of the dark shadows of its past and emerging into the modern world, so too arose a society at the forefront of science and technology. With such advancements, a culture of art arose that reflected the changes that Japan was experiencing. And in this confusing time, Japan saw the beginnings of a generational gap that sharply divided the country. On one side was stoic, traditional, older Japanese people who had seen war and complete desolation, and on the other was the younger generation who knew little of war and were raised in a world of booming technology and art. Japan needed a hero, and in 1979, that hero did not come. Actually, the generational problem is still ongoing. But at least that's when Yoshiyuki Tomino's Mobile Suit Gundam premiered on television, introducing the world to Gundams, large bipedal humanoid vehicles piloted by humans. <laughs> Gundams became a worldwide phenomenon. The franchise would expand to over a dozen TV series, over 20 animated movies, a plethora of novels and manga, and a massively popular model kit line. In 2011, the LA Times reported that by some estimations, 10 Gundam models have been sold for every man, woman, and child in Japan. By 2014, products based on Gundam characters were bringing in 80.2 billion yen per year for Namco Bandai, which in US dollars is about As of June 2018, Gundam is the 15th highest grossing media franchise of all time, estimated to have generated more than 15 billion USD in total revenue. Even a kid like me from New Jersey found himself building a Gundam model when I was 12 or 13 years old. We always talk about the reach of American soft power, but Japanese soft power is real as well. Ohio, come on <laughs> Gundams, iconic as they are, didn't bring peace to the real world, but they certainly changed the way the world thinks about giant robots, and more importantly, influenced many different industries in Japan. Gundam suits have penetrated the heart of Japanese culture, like a wakazashi blade plunging into the bowels of a defeated samurai. I'm sure Japanese engineer Masaki Nagumo's parents thought when he was studying engineering, he'd one day contribute to creating things that would better the world. Instead, he built a Gundam suit and gained the respect of gamers everywhere. The mecha, standing 8.5 meters tall and weighing about 7 tons, contains a cockpit with monitors and levers for the pilot to control the robot's arms and legs. And while it can only move at 1 km an hour, the bazooka-like air gun on its right arm shoots sponge balls at about 140 km an hour. But Mobile Suit Gundam has had a more serious impact on Japanese society as well. The mobile suits featured in the franchise were not nearly as unrealistic as other robots that both preceded and came after the birth of Gundams. When Gundam premiered, the super robot genre was defined by fantastical mecha created for children's cartoons, in which the robots would fight aliens and monsters with superpower-like abilities. <laughs> Gundam's addition of mechanized exosuits to the genre to be used as weapons in human against human military warfare was completely new and struck a chord with the Japanese public. And for any of you about to tell me that Gundam technology is fanciful, it's still pretty reasonable for a country that was planning to build a death ray during World War II. Anyway, the semi-feasibility of Gundams, along with the franchise's more mature themes, inspired Japan to consider it as a possible future technology. Now, Japan isn't actually spending their time building Gundams, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been proposed. In 2012, two politicians from Japan's Liberal Democratic Party, or LDP, the country's main conservative party, went on Japanese video sharing service Nico Nico to discuss the possibility of building a working Gundam. During the coverage, LDP representatives Masaki Taira and Hideki Niwa presented the Gundam Development Project. Now, given that a 2008 publication on the Science Portal website run by the Japan Science and Technology Agency estimated that building a real Gundam suit would cost at least $725 million for the parts and materials. This might not have been such a responsible idea in a stagnant economy. Though Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's LDP is a party that thinks outside the box. When faced with a national labor shortage rather than allow foreign workers into the country, 
Abe has pushed for the implementation of worker robots. But let's get back to Gundam's impact on Japanese technology. The influence of Gundam has also found its way to the Japanese self-defense forces. The Type 87 self-propelled anti-aircraft gun that the Japan Ground Self-Defense Force uses has an undeniable resemblance to the RMV-1 Gun Tank 2 mobile suit from Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. We can't know for sure if Gundam was the inspiration there, but even if not directly, it might have played a part subconsciously. What we do know is that in 2007, Japan's Ministry of Defense published the paper entitled Towards the Realization of Gundam, Advanced Personal Equipment System, which laid out the specs for a special suit that could enhance a Japanese soldier's abilities. The equipment contains an infrared camera and a scope that can verify if an incoming target is a friend or foe, and a monitor display that can browse the internet among other capabilities. The powered suit, which weighs nine kilograms and can run for up to eight hours, might not be an actual mecha suit, but it clearly draws inspiration from Mobile Suit Gundam. Then there's Gundam's influence on the academic and corporate world. As part of the 2005 Mitsubishi Heavy Industries Job Convention, an MHI recruiting event, seminars were held in multiple cities across Japan. The topic of these seminars was Mobile Suit Gundam Development Story. In this, one can see how highly the Japanese regard Gundams and the theory of Gundam engineering. Major corporations want prospective employees to be thinking about such technology and to be inspired by it. Gundams always seem to find their way into scientific discussions in Japan. In 2008, a conference in Hiroshima featured hundreds of academics and professionals coming together to discuss and debate the relationship of anime, science, and technology in the modern world. Conference participants seemed to believe that Gundam technology would be a fact of the future. Then, we actually have examples of Mobile Suit Gundam's direct influence on machines. We've already mentioned that Mitsubishi has Gundam on its mind. Well, Mitsubishi has also partnered with Bandai to create a simulator for concept cars, the test type of which will be decorated like the Gundam cockpit and become a simulation theater in MegaWeb, a Toyota theme park located in Tokyo. More practically, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution's appearance is influenced by the RX-782 Gundam. Then, the Isuzu VX2 concept car is supposedly inspired by the RX-178 Gundam Mark II, as we see in design arts released in issue number 71 of the Japanese magazine Axis. And Nissan Chief Creative Officer Shiro Nakamura commented that the angular lines and high-tech vents on the GTR R35 were inspired by Gundams. Gundam can simply be seen in every facet of Japanese society. In 2011, a set of 10 stamps featuring 10 of the Mobile Suit RX-782 Gundam's plastic models were released as part of a set called the Gunpla Frame Stamp Collection. Gundams were also one of only four anime franchises to be featured in the Anime Heroes and Heroines Stamp Collection released in 2005. Now, I don't know why it's good to be on a stamp, but last time I checked, Optimus Prime doesn't have one. And the obsession with Gundam in Japan doesn't stop there. Gundam-based Tokyo, a museum and store dedicated to Gundams in Tokyo, features a true-to-scale statue of the RX-0 Unicorn Gundam. The statue, standing over 71 feet tall, in destroyer mode to be fair, has attracted millions of visitors and towers over passersby as the statue of a real war hero might in other places. We could go on and on with examples of how Gundams have influenced Japanese society, but the point is that Gundam technology and mythology is an integral part of the Japanese consciousness. And that's not a totally silly notion either. The Gundam franchise depicts one of the most well thought out and complex presentations of the future existing in science fiction. Humans in Mobile Suit Gundam use the gigantic battle suits to settle disputes over power and resources. As Shinya Hashizume, a professor of urban planning and architecture at Osaka Prefectural University, said at a symposium focusing on the future of Gundam technology, quote, Gundam presents the reader with many challenges that we will encounter. It is vital to begin conducting research into these. Scientific research in Japan desperately needs a flow of new ideas. Now, in my opinion, it's unlikely in the future that we will ever see humans piloting mecha exosuits in warfare. If anything, drones are going to take over fighting duties years into the future. But there is no limit to which Gundam mobile suits have inspired Japan to think creatively, which in a significant way is part of the incredibly innovative technological culture that Japan has cultivated. Well, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. And let me know what your thoughts are on the future of Gundam technology. But always remember, humanity first. I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.